Classic, the uh, Rolex Series portion of the Emco Peters Classic. We have our GT podium. We're joined, uh, joined by our runner-up team, Austin Auto, Jeff Siegel. Thanks for arranging that. And uh, we have half of our third place team, John Edwards. John, we're going to go ahead and get, uh, get over there with some everybody. We'll start off with John. He co drives us from the, uh, the uh, number 57 Stevenson Motorsports. Chevrolet from Maryland. John, tell us about the run today. Race overall, good podium. Yeah, another podium for the Stevenson team, and uh, I think we've been executing well all season. Um, you know, today I don't think we had the pace for uh, for Jeff or Bill, but uh, my stint was pretty uneventful. I started from pole and uh, didn't have too much pressure from from Davis from behind, um, so we kind of went into fuel savings mode to uh, make it on two stops if uh, if the race did go green, and surprisingly. Uh, we only had two relatively short cautions, so um, you know I was just working on on saving fuel and uh, you know bringing the car into pit lane in the lead, and, um, and then obviously once uh, once Bill hopped in the BMW and uh, and Jeff hopped in the Ferrari, we knew those cars were going to be quick. So um, you know I think Robin did a great job to bring it home P3 uh, with with some uh, close battles there at the end. All right. Well, uh, we thought it was going to be a hard race just because of, um, you know, uh, in practice the times looked very close. On balance, it looked very close across the board. Uh, John did a great job again, took the pole, led early on. We uh, figured we needed to try and, you know, not pull away because we knew there'd be a caution, just try and maintain a good gap. Obviously, with John in the car in the early stages, he's you know able to usually get ahead of the other guys, and he did he did that and did, did exactly what was expected and asked of him. So the opening stint was good. Once all the, we cycled, like John said when I came in the room, um, it was obvious it was going to be a big battle for us. So uh, you know the car was very good, and the tires actually held up uh, better than ex better than I expected. I was pleasantly surprised with the, the performance of the tire over the stint. We did struggle to get heat in the tires and uh, grip on the restarts, but uh, and out of the pits on cold tires. But overall, the car was very good, but we just lacked enough straight line speed to where we could challenge on anybody going into the end of the back straight, or it, when somebody was behind us and we're punching a big hole, they're just able to reel us in down there. So around the rest of the lap, we were as good as anybody else, if not slightly better. But on the back straight, which is really where it counts around here in terms of racing, we just weren't strong enough. So, you know, I hate to get political about it, but I hope the series actually does something about where some of these cars are at, because frankly, I feel like we won a class today. And, uh, you know, I just want to see some changes pretty soon. Jeff Siegel and Emil Asentado, they lead the GT points. These guys were the uh, champions in, in 2010. Emil, tell us about the run today. Well, we came... Let's see how There we go. Well, we came to the track with a pretty good car, but we had some handling issues in the qualifying. We got over them uh, in the morning session, and I was sitting fifth on the, on the start, and it was pretty comfortable. But uh, again, we're in an economy road, uh, mode like a few of the other guys were, so we came in for an early pit stop. Then we had to catch up with the uh, field. So running uh, in the back of the field, trying to pick up with the leaders again, and uh, got caught up with the DP. and. Just when we ran off a of one, spun off a of one, and we're very lucky to even be able to finish the race from here. So us coming in second was just a fantastic result. Jeff did a great job. I thought the car was pretty good, and uh, I look forward to the next race. Jeff, over. Yeah, it was uh, a really close race. Like it always seems to be at Mid Ohio for whatever reason. It's always uh, a pretty, pretty nasty out on the track. All the cars running really close together. So. Um, you know, we dug ourselves a little bit of a hole. I mean, Emil had a great start, and then, like he said, the contact really, really hurt us badly. Uh, we were off sequence all day on um, on fuel strategy. We took that first yellow, and nobody else took it. And uh, we needed that because we knew that we couldn't do it on two stops. So the way it played out with uh, with that and with the cautions played into our hands, definitely. We leapfrogged some people, made up some track position, and then, um, and then fought to hold on at the end. Um, you know, a couple of really close calls. Um, you know, it's a very tight, narrow track, and uh, we had some more contact that was was almost uh, a big problem. I mean, you know, the back end of our cars 
quite smashed up. Our exhaust was smashed, so that, that could have been a lot worse. But um, great points day for us. Always happy to be on the podium. It's, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be here. All right, our GT winners, Bill Olderman and Paul Dalwana, they rise for Turner Motorsports, the uh, number 94 Turner BMW M3. First win of the year for this team. For Bill, it's his 23rd class win. That's tied for fourth all time in Grand Am. Hmm. Bill, that's a good, we'll start off with you for an opener about the day and uh, the 23rd win. No oh, shit. Should have been 24. We had such a good GS car today. Unbelievable. We thought we had uh, we had something for him, and the motor had a little issue, which is not normal for a BMW. It was actually the oil pump. Anyways, off reset, come to this race. Paul starts, does a great job. He's right in with the lead guys. He's battling it out. He's having a great time. And then they pitted him. The strategy was very strange. I didn't totally understand it. I got in the car and ran and ran and ran, and we had a very good car. We had a very good car here two years ago, last time I was here, and it's like we never left. The car likes mid-Ohio. You wouldn't think it does, but it squirts between these, you know, all the little straights really well, uh, puts power down really well, and uh, they gave me a great car. What else can you say? Continental tires, very strange, never went off. You know, they from the beginning to the end, it just car just got faster and faster and faster as it burned the fuel off, so you can't ask anything more than that. Paul, yeah, we came here uh, feeling like we were a little bit off the pace over the last few races, and the team's have been working extra hard, so I really think this is as much a team victory as, uh, as a great driving uh, um, show by Bill, but uh, we've been working really hard. We'd been testing in Watkins Glen a couple weeks ago and just working on all the little kinks to get there, so I think this is a real uh, testament to hard work for us. It's nice to be back. Obviously, uh, the M6 in its original form had its first win here, and uh, you know, it's a special track for us. Uh, obviously, the fans here are fantastic. We love coming to Mid-Ohio. There's great support, and uh, it's a great event. We can't wait to come back. We'll take some questions for our GT podium. Have a question, just raise your hand and uh, jump in. DC, go ahead. Uh, I guess it's probably for second and, and third. Uh, the BMW went on a diet since the last race. Uh, the, when you walked into this one, what did you expect to uh, I think it that that little diet you mentioned probably plays into what Bill referenced with the car getting faster and faster as it burns off fuel, and that's that's the holy grail of of racing is the car gets lighter and you go faster. So if you can keep the tires under you, it's uh, it's good. You know, most of the races this year we've worked and worked and worked on the setup, and and oftentimes made some sacrifices early on in, in practice and in qualifying in the name of of tire life, and that's worked out. Um, seems like that worked out for the M3 today, and uh, it was a really close battle for, you know, it looked like the top, certainly the top three, if not the top five, but, um, you know, I think it was it was anybody's race. Uh, just very difficult to pass here. You kind of need a mistake from somebody else, and uh, to go from where we were up to second is more than I could have asked for. Yeah, I mean, I think I have no issue with the BMW getting a break. I mean, I think they... You know, I think at the end of the day, like Bill said rightly, the car's been good here in the past. We knew they'd be strong. They've got good straight line speed, at least, and they get off the corner well. So I think, you know, and I, I could see Bill was fighting really hard at the end. He made a mistake, and he nearly lost the lead, actually, with a couple of laps to go. So, I mean, you know, you could see he was working hard for it. So I think we were all fairly well matched at the end. The 70 Mazda was catching us pretty good. So they had some good pace, both before the last restart and after the last restart, once he, he got the 44 shaken off a little bit. Um, but you know, that's all, what you want to see is you want to see people fighting for wins. And when I see that, I have no issue with it. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy those guys won today, it's fine. More questions? All right guys, congratulations, great efforts.